بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وبعد. Anyone who's a parent would know that the love Allah has put in his heart or her heart for her child or his child is something that cannot be explained to a person who has not experienced parenthood. It's just unique. It's just amazing. Parents live for their children. They give their lives. And this is something. And hence Allah has put the obligation on children towards their parents. And I say this in reference to the tale of the Prophet Nuh alayhi salatu was salam. He was a prophet of Allah. He was amongst the ulul azm, anbiya. As the Quran makes mention about it. شَرَعَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الدِّينِ مَا وَصَّى بِهِ نُوحَ وَالَّذِي أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ وَمَا وَصَّيْنَا بِهِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَمُوسَى وَعِيسَى The five great prophets that are referred to as ulul azm. فَصْبِرْ كَمَا صَبَرَ ulul azmi. Allah references Sayyidina Nuh in that as well. So when Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam's son Kan'an did not heed the message of his father and the father appealed to his son and said, come on the ark, oh my son, and leave your shenanigans and your arrogance. And he's like, I'll take shelter on the zenith of the mountain and I'll be rescued. And the father is like, listen, my son, it's not going to work. It's not going to happen. And then the father in his love and his desire and his passion for the rescue of his son, he prayed for his son. إِنَّ بَنِي مِنْ أَهْلِ وَإِنَّ وَعْدَكَ الْحَقُّ وَأَنْتَ أَحْكَمُ الْحَاكِمِينَ Oh my Lord, my son is from my household and you had promised me and surely you are the best of all judges. So I want to speak about something very, very important and that is the limitations in dua. Of course, we got to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. We ask Allah for everything. But sometimes we, we venture into things and we ask uh, for salvation or ease in matters that we don't know what is the correct thing. When the Prophet Nuh supplicated Allah for his son, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then admonished him and said, Ya Nuh, innahu laysa min ahlik. Ya Nuh, innahu laysa min ahlik. O Nuh, your son is not from your family. The first thing we learn from this, which the scholars of Tafsir tell us, that nobility of lineage, if it is not coupled with virtue, then it is kal adam, it has no value in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you couldn't have a more noble lineage than being the son of a prophet. Wow, what a great status, rank and position in society that you are the son of a Nabi. And a Nabi is born in a, in a great uh, uh, family, right? The famous incident in Bukhari, the hadith, when uh, Hiraqal, had asked Abu Sufyan regarding the lineage of the Prophet Sallallahu And Abu Sufyan said, Huwa fina dhu nasabin. He was a man of great lineage. He was a man of great lineage. And that is uh, the, the condition with all the Prophets. And so did Hiraqal then say. That's the sign of his Prophethood because Anbiya come in great families. And they come from noble uh, background. So the son of Nuh, Kan'an, whose father was the Prophet, he had a noble lineage, but because it was not coupled with good action, it did not avail him in anything. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man batta abihi amaluhu, lam yusri' bihi nasabuhu. A person whose uh, action has driven him away from Allah, his noble lineage cannot bring him close to Allah. So Allah then told the Prophet Nuh, فَلَا تَسْأَلْنِ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ Wow, now this is something for us to understand. That uh, do not ask me regarding something you do not know. And this is mentioned in the tafsir that ما ليس لك علم بأنه صواب أو غير صواب فيكون النهي واردا في مشتبه الحال That if you are not clear about something, it's vague, it's ambiguous, you're uncertain about it, then it is not correct for you to supplicate Allah in that regard. It is not correct for you to ask Allah in that regard. ويفهم منه حال معلوم الفساد بالطريق الأولى and something that you know is totally wrong. A person is asking you, make dua for, you know what? I want to marry this woman who's married. So that means you are wishing either her marriage must break or her husband must die. That's precisely what you imply. I know of a young man who had once come to me. He had proposed to a girl. He intended marrying her. Her father had reservation. And he said, can I pray that my future father-in-law dies? 
I said, that's crude, that's brutal, that's harsh. How are you going to have goodness? Literally, this had happened. So you cannot supplicate Allah for something that's unclear, vague, ambiguous, and all the more you cannot supplicate Allah for something that is wrong and forbidden. But here comes, uh, you know, the, the, the more concerning fact that, that, that we, we deduce and alert from the verse of the Quran. وَعُلِمَ بِهِ حَالُ أَدْعِيَةِ مَشَائِخِ زَمَانِنَا يَدْعُونَ بِكُلِّ مَا يُطْلَبْ مِنْهُمْ Wow! The Mufassir writes that this verse sounds a strong warning for many of the contemporary scholars of our time who are quick to pray on the request of their disciple min al khusumati wal manasib that Sheikh Ustad Tomorrow I have a court case, just pray that Allah grants me victory. There's a dispute on a land, just pray that Allah grants me this land. And you hasten to the prayer and you pray in his favor, whereas he's the perpetrator. He's not the innocent party, he's the guilty party. This ayah sounds a warning that it is not correct for you to merely make dua for anyone and everyone. Yes, a person is asking for good health, pray for him. He's asking for blessings in his sustenance, pray for him. He's asking for reconciliation in his marriage, pray for him. But something that is vague or he's the guilty party, yufhamu minhu, we learn from this that that is forbidden. When Allah told the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, فَلَا تَسْأَلْنِ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمِ Do not ask something that you do not know. Therefore, I'm saying it is important that we understand the limits, the boundaries and the parameters. We supplicate and implore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But anything that is doubtful or unclear or we don't know who's the guilty party, we cannot pray for such a person because we could be praying for something when that person has incurred the wrath of Allah. May Allah grant us the correct and the holistic understanding of this great aspect of supplication and dua.